Senex Technology will now present a demonstration using the methods described in the First Look User's Diesel Guide for the model ADSES 100D to quickly determine the mechanical integrity of an engine using their First Look Pulse Sensor for diesel engines. Senex Technology was founded in 2003 to commercialize patented technology invented by John L. Brock to capture high-frequency pressure pulses in systems with periodic cycles. Variations of the pulses from cycle to cycle often are indicative of misalignment and wear problems. The primary product of Senex is the First Look Sensor, designed to capture pulses in reciprocating engines. We call these pulse patterns engine signatures. Today's diesel engines are sophisticated machines that cost a lot and are expensive to repair. They are assets only when they are working on the road delivering goods, powering generators, pumps, etc., in construction, in agriculture, on a military mission, or powering ships. There are three purposes for using first look technology to collect and analyze the signatures. Number one, is this engine mechanically sound? Maybe I want to buy a used vehicle. Is this engine sound and do I feel good about taking this vehicle on a long trip? Number two, what is wrong with this vehicle? First look should be the first step in diagnosis when there is an indication of a problem. Don't waste your money chasing faulty OBD codes. And three, to establish a baseline for the indication of a growing problem. In other words, to monitor the engine over time in order to anticipate problems that may need fixing before a crisis can occur. This can be done right alongside with your oil changes. First, determine the physical integrity of the engine. Valves, rings and pistons, injectors, and head gaskets. The goal here is not to diagnose any problem, but to determine if there was a problem that should give one pause. For example, do I want to buy this vehicle, perhaps for resale? Can I charge more when selling this vehicle? Has this been a returned lease vehicle, or has it been used for seasonal work purposes, such as for snow plowing, or perhaps an agricultural use that may have compromised the physical components? Or has a recently completed overhaul or rebuild been completed correctly? The second reason for using the first look sensor. If an engine is not running properly, can I trust the onboard diagnostic OBD codes? Not if your problem is a mechanical problem. First Look can quickly identify mechanical problems or tell you to trust the OBD codes. The third reason to routinely collect signatures, such as with oil changes perhaps, is for time series analysis to estimate time to failure of major mechanical problems. See www.engineangel.com for more information. That's E-N-G-I-N-E-A-N-G-E-L.com. Next, we will demonstrate how to perform the first look tests on this diesel-powered vehicle. It's much easier to have two people working together to do this data collection. But first, let's review the equipment provided in the Senex diesel kit. You'll get a shepherd's hook with a sensor for vertical exhausts, a sensor with a clamp for horizontal exhausts, oil dipstick tube attachments for collecting data from the crankcase, an oscilloscope with at least two channels, two 25-foot BNC cables. You'll also want to have a fuse puller handy to remove the fuel pump fuse for cold crank tests and a diesel user's guide and timing chart. In addition, you might need a PC as well as a printer. You may need to load the PC oscilloscope software onto your PC and periodically check for software updates. You'll also need some paper towels for cleanup. Cautions. Have gloves handy. Check ventilation. These tests should be performed in a well-ventilated area. Do not wear loose clothing or jewelry and tie back or contain loose hair. 
Preparations. You should have two people to do this testing. This will take about 10 to 15 minutes. The engine should be warmed up to at least 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Use wheel chocks to block the wheels. Set up the PC and oscilloscope in a convenient location. This engine is brand new with only 688 miles on the odometer. Attach a BNC cable to the exhaust sensor. Place the Shepherd's Hook exhaust sampler in the vertical exhaust or clamp an exhaust hose in a horizontal exhaust pipe. Attach the exhaust sensor to channel A of the oscilloscope. Remove the oil indicator stick and place it on a clean, safe place. Insert the crankcase sensor hose to the oil dipstick tube. Attach the crankcase sensor to channel B of the oscilloscope. We will first demonstrate the idle and load first look tests. These tests are all you will need to determine if the engine is physically sound or not. In many cases, these two tests are all you will need. If the engine is sound and you have a code, trust the code and proceed. If the engine is sound and you do not have a code, the engine appears good to go. If the engine is not sound, then run the cold crank test to help diagnose the problem. We will cover the cold crank test last. As described in the user's guide, fill the signature log to document the vehicle tested and connect the file of data to the time and conditions of the test. This is an image of the signature log at the end of this test set. You might have a special starting procedure for the odometer to display the mileage. Or use the Senex History Manager, the SHM web application, located at www.senexhistorymanager.com to keep the signature online for later retrieval in date sequence. After you verify that the brakes are set and the chocks are in place, make sure the fan is set on or off so that you don't get unexpected changes in cranking speed. Also, make sure the computer controlled optimization is disabled. See the owner's manual for the correct way to do this. Set up the oscilloscope parameters to obtain a good readout of the signatures from the exhaust and the crankcase. The timing chart that is provided in the manual is helpful. If the idle engine is running about 600 RPM, we need at least a 200 MS sweep to see the full two rotations of the crankshaft with all cylinders firing at least once. First, we will do an idle test. Start the engine and write down the engine coolant temperature, the odometer reading, and the engine RPM if you haven't already done so. Capture a stable view that covers the full six cylinders and save it. This signature looks pretty rough. The heavy hash on the exhaust on the top in blue indicate valves are not seated, possibly because they are dirty. The bottom red signature has regions of quite high blow-by indicating not seated rings or worn rings. Next, describe what you see. Is the engine sound? Make a note of any issues you see. By looking at the file after the file has been saved, you will have a little more time to look for finer points. Using the horizontal indicator lines, you can get readings of the voltage ranges and you can get the time between the vertical lines as you slide them to cover a section of the engine cycle. Here we see six peaks and we see that the 32 MS associated with an exhaust can be connected to the power stroke in the crankcase in the previous 32 MS. This completes the idle test. To do the 1500 RPM test, one person needs to press the accelerator to get the engine to run at about 1500 RPM while the other focuses on the data capture. This added load might highlight issues that are not too visible at idle. 
It is more important that the speed be constant. It doesn't need to be exactly 1500 RPM. Just don't rev too fast. We want to see what the engine behaves like when it is operating near normal operating speed. Capture the engine temperature and the RPM. Here, we review the data being collected and stop the scanning when we see a stable pattern with at least six peaks, one for each cylinder. It will likely be necessary to reduce the sweep time to about 80 to 100 ms. The vertical dashed lines enclose one four-stroke cycle, which equals 79.6 ms. The horizontal dashed lines with blue boxes on the left enclose the maximum exhaust voltage, which equals 10.04 volts. The horizontal dashed lines with red boxes on the right enclose the maximum crankcase voltage, which equals 286 millivolts. After we have time to review the saved file, we see that it's still showing several valves and rings not seated completely, but more settled down at higher RPM. The cylinders that are not completely seated, indicated in the circles on the chart, are not the same cylinders with valves not well seated. Knowing that this engine is new, we can see that it's not broken in yet. Running at 1500 RPM, the valves are looking pretty good and the crankcase will likely become more uniform with more miles. If our purpose was just to see if the engine has a physical integrity problem or not, we are done. In this case, the engine has valves and pistons that are not broken in. Otherwise, it is fine. The signatures are likely to be quite different after a few thousand miles. But if we had spotted a problem, we might want a more thorough diagnosis so that we can estimate the job to be done for time and cost estimates. The cold crank test gives us a quick and thorough compression test to see what might be ignition and injector problems as opposed to valves, gaskets, and pistons. Since the fuel and ignition will not be involved in the cold crank, we will see how tight the cylinders are. For this test, make sure your approach to doing a cold crank is understood. Some newer engines have software controls that shut off injectors instead of removing the fuel pump fuse that is most common. You don't want to trip an OBD code for this test. After you verify the brakes are set and the chocks are in place, make sure the fan is set on or off so that you don't get unexpected changes in cranking speed. Since the cranking is pretty slow, consult the timing chart for appropriate settings. If the cranking were about 250 RPM, you would want about 80 MS per division on the chart. That would allow 10 successive cylinder firings to be shown on the screen. In the example shown, there are regions of little blow-by and low compression. In a cold crank, the compression stroke produces the most blow-by because that is the only time that the cylinder has increased pressure. The exhaust stroke is offset 360 degrees from the compression stroke. We see low compression in the cylinders that show high blow-by. Poorly seated valves are another cause for low compression. To help in the understanding of what is going on, study the cylinder offset chart from the manual. Several observations are that A. What first look shows is the sum of outputs from all cylinders at the same instant, but one cylinder typically dominates for a short time period. B. The sequence of actions on the signature are controlled by the firing sequence, not the cylinder number as assigned by the manufacturer. You need to know the layout of the cylinders to interpret gasket failures, especially if the compromise is allowing gas to move between two adjacent cylinders. C. Having a trigger to mark the ignition of one cylinder is nice, but usually not relevant on diesels since spark plugs and coils and distributor wires are not involved. If rings or pistons are bad, you have to pull all of them. If the valves or head gasket are bad, most diesels are straight configuration, so you have to take the head off. And D. 
Very bad rings can cause the compression stroke to blow by the rings, but not as much as the blow by from its power stroke. The manuals cover three, four, five, six, and eight cylinder engine diagrams. One set for four stroke engines and another set showing two stroke, four and eight cylinder engine configurations. We have shown that this methodology can be used for two purposes. One being the quick assessment of the mechanical integrity of the engine. This is useful if the engine has a code and you want to know if you should trust it. Remember, if the engine looks sound physically, trust the code. Otherwise, do not trust the code. Or you want to buy or sell a used vehicle and want to establish its mechanical integrity before you negotiate price. And secondly, for the diagnosis of an engine that does not show mechanical integrity. A cold crank shows how tight the cylinders are without the complications of injector or fuel issues. This is a relative compression test, pointing out if rings, pistons, or valves have a problem. Running at idle, or more so at about 1500 RPM, shows upper engine problems, such as with the valves, head gasket, or the injector, or bottom engine problems with rings, pistons, or cylinder walls. Thank you for listening today. For more information and to order your AD SES 100D diesel kit, please visit our Senex Technology website at senextech.com. That's S E N X T E C H.com. For more information regarding the PicoScope, please contact Pico Technology by using the information shown here.